Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Half Gazette, here with the next video, and this one is a defensive video. Uh, for those of you Town Hall 9s out there, you guys probably have been getting hit by a lot of air attacks, specifically La Loon. Uh, it's probably the meta right now for Town Hall 9. We see hog attacks, we see witches, we see pekkas, we see a whole lot of variation, uh, which is nice at Town Hall 9, but uh, most of the, ta the attacks, I'd say probably about 40 to 50% are still Laloon, which is way more than any other strategy we're seeing right now. So this base, I call it the no-fly zone. Um, not my own creation, this base specifically is, but the concept I've seen on other bases, and it's worked very well in wars. It's probably the most successful type of base we see. And we'll get into the specifics in just a moment, but for my subscribers, I want to say, uh, first of all, I lost the attacks for the Town Hall 10 uh, Bo La Loon uh, attack strategy video, so I'm not going to be able to put that out uh, for a few days, probably until I get some new attacks. So I apologize for that, but we still have some Town Hall 10 content if you go back a few days. So happy about that, to at least have that for you guys. Um, and also, tomorrow, the iTunes uh, give iTunes gift card giveaway for the Braden Whitman subscribers and the survey results are coming out tomorrow. We're looking for that. But getting back to this video, let's get specific. Um, we'll go through each attack strategy that's pretty popular right now. We'll go through different elements of the base, kind of how everything shapes up. So let's get right into it. Um, first, first and foremost, like I said, this base is primarily designed to be anti Lava Hound and Balloon, any kind of Laloon based attack. So what it does is it divides the base into two divisions. Up here, and that's going to pop up, but up here we have the uh, the very heavily uh, uh, air targeting defenses, but no air defenses. So that makes it so there's not going to be any Lava Hound sitting here. So whatever's in this area has to be untanked. The bottom here is where all the air defenses sit. Keeping in mind, we want these two to have, be in range of each other, so a Lava Hound will be targeted by both of them if they do try to use La Loon. But the thing is here, the, if they if the attacker wants to uh, try to take out this bottom part of the base with La, La Loon, they're getting all four of your air defenses, but they're not really getting any air targeting defenses. All the cannons are down here. Um, pretty much all there is is a few wizard towers. We'll talk about why they're there in a second. Uh, the mortars make it a little bit harder to get in there. It you know it delays everything. We do have a few seeking air mines just in case they do try to use uh, La Loon. And even these air defenses very exposed, but you know. What are they going to do? Are they going to drop some hogs to take it out? Um, it's just not worth it to invest La Loon down here, even with these air defenses exposed. Um, there's just you're getting the air defenses, but the main uh, defensive power for in terms of air is up here. We have all the archer towers. We have pretty much all the Teslas. We actually have a troll Tesla, which I'll talk about in a moment. Uh, but pretty much everything's up there besides a few wizard towers. And that makes it really hard for the attacker to use La Loon because it's splitting up um, how they want to do it. Um, the main thing, the reason La Loon is so powerful is when those Lava Hounds sit and get targeted by everything that's not the air defense but the Expo, the Archer Tower, the Wizard Tower, um, they soak up all the traps. That's when it's really dangerous uh, and that's how it can wreck your base. So by splitting it up like this, that makes it very difficult to use La Loon. Um, the Air Sweepers are down here. It's better off using them down here than up there. We want to make sure it's not too easy to roll over this base with uh, with La Loon because it's only air defenses. Uh, we need that extra uh, help to to make sure it's not too easy, and that way it ensures there's really no way you can use La Loon. Um, if you guys have ideas, I'm always uh, happy to check them out in the comments, but I think this base is pretty anti-La Loon. Um, so the question becomes, okay, it's kind of a weird design. Does that make it susceptible to other attack strategies? And maybe more so than another base, but it's still pretty solid against most other attack strategies. And we'll just kind of go through them. We have hogs, or probably the second most common. Um, I think new attack strategies are emerging that might take over um, popularity from hogs. But for the most part, um, Hog-based attacks are still very popular, um, specifically the stoned hobo, uh, the golem-based attacks like that. The, the one thing this base has is it's, it's difficult to get the queen, but get the rest of the base taken out at the bottom here, because this bottom part of the base is very much anti-hog. So 
Uh, the attacker has to take out your queen. Um, the king's up here as well. Your heroes can take out the hogs very quickly, so they don't have much of a choice. Their kill squad has to engage this part of the base at some point. Because of that, their kill squad is going to be in that area, and this compartment right here, this middle compartment with the expo, makes it very difficult to bring the golems and everything from that side of the base down to this side of the base. They have to invest an enormous amount of spells and stuff. It's a huge investment. Um, so it makes it so the hogs are going to have to deal with this on their own most likely. That's what you want because this part of the base is very much anti-hog. Um, cannons actually do more damage than archer towers uh, when they're the same level. And because of that, they're stronger against hogs. They have much more hit points. So cannons um, are often thought to be equal to archer towers. But when it comes to dealing with hogs, the cannons are going to be a lot more effective. So you have all of your cannons down here. You have the bomb tower. You have um, three out of four of your giant bombs. This one's pretty much, you know, down there. But these two definitely are going to hit the hogs at some point. These two right here. You have four out of your six spring traps. Um, a few little bombs. The wizard towers, I put two down here because they actually are pretty solid against hogs. They have a decent amount of hit points and they got a damage buff a little time back. So they do... Um, deal a, a good deal of damage to a, a group of hogs with that splash damage. So another good thing to have in there. Um, a few skeleton traps. We have the two right here. The little bombs to help out as well. And even the mortars can get some groups of hogs with splash damage. So it's a pretty you know hard part of the base for hogs to take out. And it's not easy to get a kill squad down there because you can't just ignore the queen and the king up here. They, they, the attacker has to prioritize and make their, their kill squad uh, cover this part of the base first to take out those heroes. So that's kind of why it's strong against hogs. Probably not the strongest anti-hog base, but it has stuff going for it. And I think because of that, it can be, uh, it can help hold up pretty well. Uh, moving on, uh, a few mass attacks like mass falcs, the, the pekkas, even witches, just kind of the overpowering attacks. Those can be tricky, and, um. This base, I, don't, I mean, I don't know, it's hard to predict how any base fares against those attacks because they are a bit of luck and it's hard to predict. But a few things this base has going for, one, there's that disconnect, that kind of buffer space between uh, the top half of the base or the uh, the air covering part of the base and then the this part of the base down here, there's that buffer, which makes it hard for uh, Valks or anything to make their way through. They're typically going to fan out towards this area or towards that area. So that can uh, screw up the attack a little bit. It won't necessarily mean you'll you'll survive the attack because they can still get lucky if they go to the outside. You guys have probably seen that a lot, but that you have a better chance if they don't just storm through your base like that. So that's definitely one thing that helps. Um, also, notice how these compartments are oriented. They're kind of uh, all parallel to each other, and they're going into the base, like down the base, not across the base, if that makes sense. You can see same thing on both sides. They're going uh, from up with there to down there, down the long side of the base. That's how they're oriented, and that's to give a little more integrity to each part of the base. It makes it so the attack um, has trouble uh, just kind of going from that side to that side, because typically a long, a long base like this is kind of a rectangle. It can be a little bit risky because the troops can just kind of go through like a wave. There's nothing really flanking them. So by having the compartments oriented like that, it prevents that by um, shutting off certain parts of the base from each other, even if they're technically on the same side of the moat, uh, with the moat being this area and there. So this archer tower is pretty set off from this archer tower, which is pretty set apart from this archer tower. There's those lines in between, and that makes it difficult for mass attacks, or really any attack in general that tries to take out the entire uh, half of the base, either that half or that half. It's difficult because they can't really come across and get the entire thing in one coherent push. So that's a little bit more of a leap of faith. You kind of have to believe me on that. Um, but like I said, these bases hold up pretty well. I've seen a number of attacks on bases similar to this. Uh, in our wars. Okay, moving along. Um, dragons are probably another concern you guys might have. Whenever you see the air defenses in one place and the air targeting stuff in the other, people think, um, you know, get the queen going in this compartment. And that actually might be an effective thing to do as I look at this base right here, is to try to wall break the queen in here, have her just walk in and take out all four of these air defenses uh, from this compartment. That probably is feasible. Uh, there is the air sweeper to contend with, which uh, 
which will make you, the attacker have to invest quite a few rages. There is some uh, HP as a buffer. There's you know a lot of buildings that have to be taken out uh, to funnel her into the base, but that is doable. Um, and maybe ideally there'd be some walls going across here uh, like this to uh, kind of prevent her from getting deep and getting all four of the air defenses taken out. I think that's one adjustment I might make looking at this base is have some walls going along here uh, to prevent the queen from doing that. But even if a kill squad or a queen walk or whatever does take out these four air defenses, um, it's important to put a few seeking air mines on this side of the base to take out dragons uh, because dragons you know, they're tanky, but they're not like lava hounds. And they're going to go down pretty quickly. Uh, there is a little bit of HP in here to try to help out. Most of the HP is at the bottom. I think that's the best bet. But um, there is some HP at the top here. And that can help a little bit. But with so many air targeting defenses, and they can't really drop a lava hound because it won't like, it'll run all the way over here at a range of most of these defenses on this side. So that the attacker doesn't have anything besides those dragons. And if they only have like five of them um, and no spells to help out, that's going to be difficult to take out this entire part of the base with all these air traps. Put the uh, red air bombs here. Trust me, that's going to be a good idea. They're much better spent on that side of the base. So uh, I think dragons are tricky. And by nature, they always are hard attacks to do because you have to, dragons can get weird on you. They can take a lot of time to go through a base. There's just so many factors with dragon attacks that make it difficult. And if someone gets a three star with a dragon attack, you know, good for them. They they had a nicely planned attack, but those tend to be tough to do. And if you're forcing someone to use dragons on your base, unless it's like an obviously an easy uh, dragon base, you're doing something right because that's not the most reliable attack strategy, even with the slight dragon buff we saw. Um, moving on, uh, I already talked about the orientation of the compartments. I had that written down. Uh, the Tesla farm, or the lack of the Tesla farm in this case, I have them spread out. Uh, you can do a Tesla farm. I don't think this base works as well with the Tesla farm because you want to spread out this damage in this part of the base here. Uh, but there are the fake locations behind this town hall. People put Tesla farms behind their town hall so much. Um, so that's something that works out well and it'll fool a lot of attackers, especially with this next compartment being pretty empty with the two by twos in there. There's a lot of places for Teslas. Same with the other side of the base. I do have a troll Tesla, by the way. I think it's a good idea at Town Hall 9. Um, people, it, people hate seeing that, but sometimes you uh, got to play a little dirty to get the, uh, the first attack uh, defended. I think it's still a good idea for quite a few of your bases within your clan. Um, so test the farm or the lack thereof with the fake test the farm locations. We have the giant bombs, which I want to talk a little bit more about. I wouldn't recommend a double giant bomb set on this base. I think a better idea is to spread them out. Notice how the bomb tower, which is pretty much a giant bomb on its own, is far enough away from these two that the same heal probably won't be able to cover both of them. So make the attacker, you know, use all their heal spells, uh, really thin them out as far as spells go. We have the spring traps nice and spread out here. I put one giant bomb over here. You never know what the attack could be. You don't want to, you know, probably put all four of the giant bombs on one side of the base. Although it's probably an option you could take if you really want to sell out for defending against hogs on this side of the base. But yeah, most of the spring traps, these little bombs help as well. They actually do a pretty good amount of damage. So I threw those in there. Skelly traps also very, uh, very helpful. And I put them on this side of the base as well. You could slide this down even more if you wanted to. It's, you know, up to you. It's uh, it's probably going to be your base you're designing, unless you copy this one, which is up to you. I don't mind when people copy the base. It's, you know, if you don't have time, this is probably a good base to use, and it hasn't been used before. I just built it tonight. Uh, so last few things. HP, like I said, most of your high HP buildings in terms of storages and stuff, put them on this side of the base here. That's going to be your best bet because a queen walk could be pretty damaging um, because these air defenses can be targeted directly by the queen so the uh, the healers won't get taken out by them which makes queen walks uh, pretty viable on this side of the base so I put um, some HP to stop that especially to uh, try to stop the potential queen charge for all four of these air defenses which like I said I'd recommend after looking at this base try to take a few walls from somewhere else it's pretty doable all you need is like five and have them go across like that to uh, to block off the air defenses a little bit better. That's going to be your best bet in terms of uh, defending that queen charge, baby dragon or dragon attack or whatever. Uh, baby dragons actually could be something on this base. 
but even baby dragons, they don't have as many hit points as dragons, and they're going to go down pretty quickly to all these defenses, especially if they're clumped up because they won't do as much damage, won't be able to uh, go through the base as fast if they're in a mass number. So that's another thing that I don't think will be that effective against this base. Like I said, it'll have a chance. This base is mainly to defend against Laloon attacks, but it's pretty solid against every other attack, as you guys have, uh, have heard me talk about. Uh, lastly, in terms of CC troops, I wouldn't recommend Lava Hound or Golem or stuff like that. Um, I think those big troops are, are not the best meta at Town Hall 9 right now. It is lurable, by the way. Just keep that in mind if, you, uh, if that has any impact on your decision. I typically recommend bringing a dragon um, with like a Valk or something, or the baby dragon with the Valks, something like that. Um, that does some splash damage, has a you know relatively high HP, but also deals out some pretty you know high high levels of splash damage. So think about doing that. Uh, but really up to you on the CC, whatever you find works best. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it helped for those of you Town Hall nines. Good luck if you're building your own base, and uh, feel free to use this one if uh, if you want. Try it out in war. Tell me how it works. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments, and I'll be sure to to look in there, try to answer some of them, talk with you guys about the base, because um, I'm interested to see what you guys have to say. But yeah, this is the No Fly Zone at Town Hall 9. Hope you guys liked it, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for the gift card giveaway and survey results. Be sure to, uh, to watch that. See you guys then. Bisect the Tron out.